should die but grace and mercy said oh no oh no you've already paid the price I once was blind but thank God I see grace and mercy came along and rescued me Let us go to the house of the Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Good morning, Shalom. Good morning. I first give an honor to my Savior, Lord Jesus the Christ. Shalom, we are truly glad. We're thankful to our almighty God for allowing us to once again, to once again to be in the house of the Lord, but more importantly, to be behind this sacred desk. Yes, definitely to bring forth the word from our Lord, but also to be in the presence and to be in service with my shallow new site family. Uh, look, beloved, I, uh, this past week as I was preparing, as I was preparing Uncle Doug, uh, my heart became overjoyed <laughs> at the thought of how God saw fit <laughs> about 20-something years ago. <laughs> God saw fit to speak to a great pastor, yes, yes. Uh, to the late Reverend Dr. Theodore Cunningham. Amen. He spoke to Dr. Cunningham something into his heart about a young woman. <laughs> a young woman, a mom who, uh, hmm. God's great and, grace and mercy. <laughs> a young woman whom God had already ordained a great path that this young woman knew nothing and had no idea what she was about to embark upon. So today I give honor first or secondly to the, to the late Dr. Reverend Theodore Cunningham. And then to the other young man who I served for, I think about 11 years as youth pastor, I think 10, 10 or 11 years uh, here at Shiloh New Site, I give honor to uh, Reverend Dr. Anthony Parrish Sr. Uh, who saw much in me to allow me to serve in that capacity here at Shallow New Site. So to both of these great men of God, I thank God for both of them for seeing what this young lady didn't see in herself. And so to them, I give honor to both of them this morning for two great men of God. Um, I'm also thankful this morning to my dear friend, Deaconette Nathaniel Harley, uh, not only for him allowing God to use him to continue uh, this ministry to move forward. Amen? Amen. Come on, y'all a little quiet on that one. To continue to allow this ministry to move forward. Amen? Because a lot of churches don't continue to move forward when the pastor uh, has gone a step down. But D. 
Deacon Harley allowed God to use him in a special way. So I thank God for him, but not only that, for his friendship. Uh, because uh, as, a, as a minister, you know, when you have, uh, yes, other preachers, but when you have deacons praying for you and uh, stand by, standing behind you, I want to thank him for, for his friendship and, uh, and for trusting the God in me uh, to come and to preach behind this sacred desk in his absence this morning. Amen. Amen. Some folk don't leave the house of God when they invite folk in uh, to preach. So I, I thank God for Deacon Harley. To my parents. Uh, uh, deacons Brendan Joseph Brown, uh, thank God for them uh, loving on me and their grand dog. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We praise God for them. Amen. Putting on pampers on their grand dog. So they reminded me that this morning. I thank God for them uh, doing all that they do. Um, I see my uncle, see some cousins uh, in the house of God. I see some friends, praise God, who are here, sorority sisters, deaconess from Shallow Baptist Church, Old Sight. I see folk in the house this morning. So we praise God for all of you being here to this preacher and to the other preachers in the house of God who I serve here at Shallow New Sight. Um, I thank God for you all and for the ministry that your God has placed in each and every one of you all. And when I was, I was, um, and uh, she would want me to say tickle pink, but I ain't gonna say tickle pink, but I'm gonna say tickle red to my, to my dear sister Fernanda and these great men back here singing. I, I, I love uh, when I hear the men of New Sight singing. So we praise God for each and every one of you. Look, I'm, I've, I've gotten all of the formalities out of the way um, and I came here to do what God would have me to do. Amen. I just wanted to get those out of the way so y'all wouldn't think I left here and didn't have any manners when I came back. So, <laughs> so I wanted to get those out of the way. But there is a word from the Lord. So if you have your swords with you and uh, to the technology team, I know they're going to put it up on, on, the, on the screen for you. Uh, but we're going to the book of Exodus. Uh, for the young people in the house, that is the second book in the Bible. Uh, book of Exodus chapter 3. Uh, we're going to start reading at verse 11. Uh, we'll go, go down to verse 15. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. And if it is your custom, which I believe it is here still at Shallow New Site, to stand for the reading of God's Holy Writ as well. If you are at home, I know I can't see you, but God can see you. So if you are at home, could you please stand for the reading of God's Holy Word? Amen. Exodus chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. The NIV version reads as follows. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. For when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are saying to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. But God, God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Shallow, this is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Come on. If you would focus with me just for a moment or two on the subject matter, rather the statement this morning, Shallow, if you don't know me by now, if you don't know me by now, come on, let us look to our Lord in prayer. God, we come to you this morning. God, we thank you for loving on us. We thank you for keeping us. God, we thank you for walking with us and talking with us every step of the way. God, we thank you for waking us up in our right minds this morning to allow us to come out and to do what that which you would have already called us to do. God, as you already know, whenever I stand behind this sacred desk, in our secret, secret moments, God, you know, as I always say to you, that I cannot preach until the real preacher shows up. And so right now, God, I'm asking and praying that you would show up, but not only show up, I'm asking that you would show out. God, hide me behind the cross, God, and allow your people to see none of Ritter, but all of you in Ritter. Decrease me, God, so that you and only you, God, will be increased. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thy sight. O Lord, my strength 
and my Redeemer. For it's in the most precious, awesome, and matchless name of Jesus the Christ we do pray that all of God's children say together, Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Shallow, if you don't know me by now. Beloved, I was reminded this past week about the song that was titled, If You Don't Know Me By Now. You see, it was a song, beloved, a song where as the group had credited their unfortunate problems for giving them the inspiration to write such a heart-rendering song. It's a song, beloved, that exemplified trust issues, a song that brought about a lack of faith amongst individuals. Or as the group once explained in an interview on NPR, it was a song that expressed a common sentiment throughout the group, where at some point in time in their relationship with their booze, come on, for no matter how long they had been together, but for some reason, some folk just still couldn't quite seem to understand them at all. And so their heart rendered out, rendered out and saying, uh, uh, Sister Fernanda, if I could sing, I would sing it for you, but I ain't going to sing it right now. The song, song rendered out and saying, if you don't know me by now, you will never, never, never know me. Oh, come on, Shiloh, don't y'all sit up in here and act like y'all been saved all your life and you don't know nothing about Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, but that's okay. That's okay, but, but you see, when I thought about those heart-wrenching words this past week, Minister, Minister Portion, and yes, even while singing those words out at loud, in my, at, loud at, at times this past week, there came a moment in the midst of my thoughts, and in the midst of my singing, I started wondering to myself, Uncle Doug, are there ever any times, are there ever any times, beloved, when our Heavenly Father looks down and is singing these same exact words to the people of God? Oh, come on, come on. Y'all got to help me preach this thing this morning. You see, is this exactly how we are making God feel towards us as we are traveling along this Christian journey? But what do you mean by that, Rip? Well, you see, as we travel through this thing called life, you see, one moment we'll watch this disease called COVID get to one level. Come on, numbers will go down, churches are opening up, folk are coming back together. And the next thing we know, the next thing we know, we know we look, the news is reporting that there's a new strand out, uh, Sister De De Deborah, and, and, and there's a new strand out of COVID that has come out. Come on, booster after booster is required. The numbers are going back up. Come on, every time we turn on the news. Another loved one, young folk are dying at the hands of gun violence. Food and gas prices are on the rise. I'm, I'm just painting the picture for you here. You see, Mother Nature is raising all sorts of havoc around us. One moment they say we're in a recession and the next moment we're not. And through all of this stuff we're constantly dealing with and constantly watching day in and day out anxiety. Come on, come on. Anxiety levels of the people of God are rising. Folk are getting angrier. That's right, the people of God. We are getting angrier than we've ever been before. There's more hatred in the world than love. Folk are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And some of us have even lost all hope wondering whether we'll ever make it through this thing called life. And so with all of that said, Shallow, with all of that said, I can only imagine God looking down at the people of God looking in and throughout his creation. And I'm only going to say a part of the song here. Can you hear God right now? Can you hear him saying, as long as we've been together, Shallow, come on, it should be so easy to do. Just get yourself together or you might as well say goodbye. For what good is a love affair when you can't see eye to eye? Because if you don't know me by now, Shiloh, come on, beloved. God says that you will never, never, never know me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and I don't know who needs to hear this word this morning. But oftentimes, beloved, you see, oftentimes in this thing called life, you see, many of us will often forget or we'll lose sight of who our lives or who our churches actually belong to. You see, we're dealing with some trust issues and a lack of faith. We, we, we keep looking more at our situations than at the one who is actually in control of our situations. Oh, I know somebody didn't want to hear that, but that's okay. That's okay. And so God has to ask us this morning, do you not remember when you were sick? 
And I restored you to health and healed your wounds. Come on. Do you not remember, my brother, when you were fearful of what may come and cried your eyes out in the midnight hour? Yes, weeping may have endured for just a, month, just a night, but because of God, joy came in the morning. Oh, come on, come on. Do you not remember, Shiloh, when you were laid down to your last sin? And God supplied your every need according to God's riches, and which is in Christ Jesus. Somebody needs to hear this morning, Minister Portia. Do you not remember when they talked about you and they called you everything but a child of God, but God made your enemies your footstool? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in all that we're remembering this morning and in everything that's going on in and around us, if we don't know the power of God by now, we will never, never, never know. But I'm crazy enough to believe, Shiloh, that because God knows that there are some sitting under the sound of my voice right now, the folk who've been struggling along this Christian journey, folk who over the past couple of years, or, or has it been a couple of years? A year, year or so, something like that, of not having a pastor. Come on. You've been finding it hard to completely trust. You've been taking it to the Lord, Shiloh, but you still hold it on to 50% of it. Come on, your past, our circumstances, racism, folk are counting you out. The enemy is busy. Yes, yes. But because my God knows, I'm crazy enough to believe that God had me to stop by Shiloh to tell somebody this morning that God is ready to speak into your existence this morning. God is ready to turn some things around for you. God is about to do more than you can even ask or think. Because God has turned our attention onto a passage this morning. Onto a passage that is staged to encourage each of us to the fact of the matter that no matter what or who we may have to encounter on this journey, even if it is ourselves, God says that today, Shalom, that's right, today is the day that the people of God can have confidence in knowing that the great I am, come on, that the I am who I am will always work things out on your behalf. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, just watch this. Watch this. Hang in there with me, young folk. I know I got some young folk. Hang in there. I promise I won't be long before you. You see, this morning, this morning, beloved, we find ourselves in the presence of a young man. A young man who was found to be a baby boy during the time when the Egyptian king had ordered all, Israel, all Israelite boys to be killed. Come on, this baby boy who we speak of this morning, Shiloh, and this baby boy was strategically placed in a tar seal basket by his mother. A basket, Sister Barbara, uh, Deacon Barbara, which was put in the Nile, on the Nile River. Uh, a river that was full of all sorts of danger. Come on, there were scorpions. Uh, there were snakes. There were crocodiles and the like. And she placed the basket of, on, the, uh, on the river in hopes that her baby boy would one day be saved. Yeah, yeah. And then here we find a mother, a mother who knew about the power of God. He, she trusted her son's complete welfare and the future to God and God alone. Aren't you glad? That, 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 that somebody had you on their mind. Yeah. Come on, that, 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 yeah. that, that somebody prayed for you. Come on. And so young Moses, in spite of all that he went through, in spite of him counting himself out, and in spite of some other folks, Shiloh, the favor of God continued to surround this baby boy. Yeah. Uh, like a shield, he, he was destined for greatness. So come on, Shiloh, y'all know the story. But more important, you know your own story. You see, you see, because you see, there was once a time in this thing called life when you two were counted out. Come on, they they wanted you and your dreams to be dead. Uh, they want they they they, they, they and, and if we if we're honest with ourselves, there's still some things in life today that actually looks as if they're floating down the river of life. Mm -hmm. But because Mama or Big Mama had you on her mind, yeah. come on, we are still destined for greatness you see if you don't know me by now and so although moses grew up as royalty he grew up grew up uh, uh, come on so busy he grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth so to speak and he grew up lacking nothing there was still no tolerance in his life for injustice and i, I just wish somebody would tell this story to the folk uh, whose house just got uh, raided down in florida but you see after taking a bowl just stand after taking a bold just stand uh, against the injustices of the people of God, Moses fled for the fear of his life. Mm -hmm. And for 40 years, he wandered in the middle of nowhere, taking care of some sheep. Yeah. For 40 years, there was wandering. Uh, for 40 years, there was lost experience. For 40 years, there was all sorts of stress and depression. 40 years of his passion, new sight, his calling, his dreams, his people, and his love for unity and ministry have all now become a distant memory. 
And today, beloved, right here where we are in scripture, in my spiritual imagination, I now see a man who went from having influence and power to a man who now seems to have no hope and has given up on life. Come on, I see a man who at one point in time boldly spoke up to folk. Folk who blatantly made racist comments to a man who now seems to be full of fear. Come on, I see a man who, who can make sacrifices to a man who now questions himself as to why should I even try. See, for 40 years, Moses, in spite of the favor that fell upon him, he allowed his trust to waver simply because of his circumstances. But we now see a man who is having a conversation. Come on, he's having a conversation with God. As God appears to him at this exact moment in scripture, during a very low point in his life. And God tells him, in spite of how you feel about yourself, Moses, don't you know me by now that in spite of what you go through, I will still be with you. You see, and I don't know. I don't know who the spirit of the living God is speaking to at this particular moment, but truth be told, many of us sitting right here, whether you're in the house of God or whether you're online, many of us have had some wandering moments in life just like Moses. Whether it's been 40 days, 40 weeks, months, and or years, many of us have, have had these wandering moments and some of us either came in those doors or we logged in at a very po low point in life and or in ministry. Come on, we used to stand up for injustice both inside the church and outside. We, we want unity, but baby, because we're afraid of what some other folk might say, we won't open up our mouths. Come on, we've gone from understanding where our power comes from to losing all hope. We look at our circumstances and the people around us over on Facebook, and so we think to ourselves, why should we even try? Yeah. Thinking that nothing will change. And so we've now found ourselves in a place where God has been placed over to the side. But even when the struggles of life gets too heavy, Shiloh, come on, when mama or daddy is gone, when the pandemic has tried to steal both my joy and my livelihood, come on, when worry piles up on me and life gets difficult. Oh, I wish I had about two or three witnesses in the house of God right now who, who are afraid, who, are, who will say that I've had some ups and I've had some downs, come on. But even, even the holiest of the holiest Christian folk can waver in their faith sometime and don't you let them fool you yeah. and so the word of god is here the word of god is here this morning to exemplify that when life happens and the river of life starts to overflow the spirit of the living god reminds us this morning shallow that we each and every one of us me you we can still make it through but god says we got to remove some negativity yeah. Yeah. You see, in other words, it's beloved, beloved as, uh, come on, come on, Deaconess Robin, as our pastor would always say, uh -uh, we got to get rid of some stinking thinking. Yeah, yeah. You see, we must refuse to be fearful. And we need to remove some things and some people in our lives who are hindering our growth and our ability to move forward in this thing called life. Yeah, yeah. You see, at the beginning of our focus chapter, at the beginning of this chapter, Moses is meeting with God at the burning bush. Yeah. And here we find Moses receiving his orders to be the hands and the feet of God as, as he stands before Pharaoh to bring the Israelites out of bondage. Yeah. You see, it's a time, beloved, where we now witness God giving Moses a second chance to exercise his faith like God gives to each and every one of us. It's a time where God wants to show Moses that his strength is not in him and him alone, but in all of his strength rests in God. But, but, but you see, when God demonstrates his divine power to, to Moses, Moses still fails to trust in the power of God simply because of him being called upon to do something that him in his humanistic mind, come on, come on, imagine that he could never do. Yes. And so in verse 11, in verse 11, based upon some past failures, we see Moses speaking negativity into his own existence. Come on, as he states, who am I that I should go? You see, there were 40 years of feeling inferior, 40 years of considering himself a failure, 40 years of feeling defeated, all because he felt that his past had disqualified him from being and doing that which God had already called him to do. You see, beloved, he was a man at this point it, it, with his eyes fixed on Moses and Moses alone. He was a man thinking that he needed status and power, and he was convinced that there is no reason in God's green creation as to why he could ever be used to help build the kingdom of God. Yeah. 
And it's that same inferior, inferiority complex, that same negative thinking, and those feelings of failure that often keeps the people of God held up in spiritual bondage. Because you see, many of us, and if you haven't, young folks, just keep on living. But many of us have at some point in time felt just like Moses. You see, we, 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 we felt just a little bit inadequate. Oh, I don't have the education. Come on. You see, my, my bank account is too low. Come on. You see, you see, may, may not have as much experience as the next. I'm not a biblical scholar, but let me tell you, they aren't either. You see, you see, and, and it's that type of negative thinking that often keeps us from doing that which God would have us to do. But it's also, come on, I know somebody not going to like this, uh, Mr. Portia, but it's also that negative expectation that we put on some young folk, especially our young people. Come on, expectations where if they don't pray like us. Come on, if they don't dress like us, if they don't act like us, then they are not one of us. And it's that same stinking thinking from church folk that are keeping folk out of the church. Mm -hmm. Because after all, why would some folk want to come up in the church when the church folk are slinging the same prejudices and hatred that they're receiving on the outside? Oh, I know y'all weren't going to like that, but that's okay. That's okay. But you see, there is still good news because God had me to come in this morning to tell someone that this is not the day to let some doubt or discouragement to seep into our spirits. Do you know I'm shallow? You see, this is not the day to let some negative people to get you down. Do you know him, shallow? This is not the day, young folk, to let folk look down on you simply because you are not young. No, this is the day when God is about to make a shift in the atmosphere simply because he needs some folk to help build the kingdom of God right here on earth if you don't know me by now you will never 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 know me but then watch this watch it Shiloh because I believe I believe that God is about to shower down blessings upon the people of God in some of the most unlikely places and through some of the most unlikely folk but in order for us to know just that the people of God, secondly, must remember who is with us on the journey. You see, in other words, you see, yes, we might be going through. And we might not even be worthy to serve. And we'll probably even disappoint God on many occasions, some more than others. But in verse 12, come on, in verse 12, God still says, in spite of how you feel, I will still be with you. You see, no matter how reluctant and how negative Moses you have been, and no matter what other people may have said about you, God still promises you, New Sight, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. <clears throat> and if I can put my spiritual imaginary cap back on, Mom, I could almost imagine God responding to Moses by saying, it doesn't matter who you are, Moses. It doesn't matter if you're if you're in a pity party right now. It even doesn't matter what some other folk might be saying about you or to you, what, or what you've done. But what matters most, Shiloh, is that you understand that I will be with you at all times you see you see you see beloved God isn't concerned about our inadequacies or our limitations and God surely wouldn't have sent Moses out to speak to Pharaoh in his own humanistic knowledge and royalty status but rather God sent Moses out because God promised to be with him at all times and that same promise is extended to each of us here today and I don't know about you deacons but something always seems to stir up on the inside of me when I when I know that the presence of God is is always with me at all times you see there's something about having the assurance come on of, of, of the eternal come on there's something about knowing that the all-knowing the ever-present God is with me every step of the journey because you see shallow when I know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with me you see I can stop worrying about any and everything that goes on around me you see when I know that my Savior is riding with me oh I still might fuss when you cut me off on the highway but I I will quickly give God some praise for some saving me from that accident. You see, when I know that my all in all is with me every day on that difficult job, yes, I might get tired, but I'm here to tell you I won't get worn out. You see, when I know that the lily of the valley is with me, when I'm watching all of the craziness that's going on in the news, oh yeah, I might get bothered about what's going on down in Florida, but I'm here to tell you, Shallow, that I won't get anxious. You see, and because 
because God is always working out on our behalf, God needs the people of God to stop focusing on the difficulties of this whole world. Stop worrying about every obstacle and every shortcoming. We got to stop stressing over that which we cannot fix, but rather we must fix our eyes on the one who promises to be with us every step of the way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. If you don't know me by now, you will never, never, never know me. Okay, okay, I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta go. Remove the negativity, recognize who is with you, and then, and then let me leave you with this last thing, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I, young folk, I told you, I'm not going to be long. You see, in spite of the various things that life tends to throw at us, in spite of our feelings of inferiority and insecurities, in spite of the hard decisions that may come our way, the spirit of the living God had me to stop by to remind someone this morning that you will make it through what you're going through. But God says to somebody, you got to recognize your authority in Jesus. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Let me, let me tell you. You see, a, a, a great preacher friend of mine this past week, she reminded me that, uh, she reminded me how, how it's a blessing, Shiloh, to have the favor of God to rest upon you. You see, she, she said favor is a great place to be. But when you can walk, in your authority. You see, that has already been given to you. You see, that's when, that's, that, that, that's something totally different. You see, you see, the authority that has been given to me and to you through the blood that has been shed way back on Calvary. Oh, come on, come on. When we can recognize the authority, there's no doubt that, uh, that we can make it through. You see, in verse 14, in verse 14, as Moses stood in the presence of God, you see, yes, there was favor that had rested upon him. Yeah. But Moses, I need you to walk in your authority. You see, I need you to tell them that as I am who I am. I need you, Moses, to walk in your authority and tell them I am is the one who sent you. Yeah. You see, in other words, Moses, I'm not asking you to go in your own strength, no. nor am I asking you to rely on some other folk, yeah. but rather I'm asking you to walk in your authority and tell them that I am who I am. Yeah. And when you tell them that, when you tell them just that, yeah. folk will start to listen. So shallow, if you're sick, somebody needs to know this morning, walk in your authority and know that I am is your healer. You see, if you're in need this morning, walk in your authority and know that I am will be your helper. And come on, if you're lonely this morning, walk in your authority and know that I am is a friend like no other. You see, if you're thirsty, come on, he'll give you something to drink. If you're tired, he'll give you rest. Do you know me, Shallow? In the midst of your worry, do you know me? In your fear, Shallow, do you know me? Through dangers, cause and snares, the great I am is the shepherd who will take care of you. I am the bread of life who will never let you go hungry. I am is the light of the world who will bring you out of darkness. I am the Alpha and Omega. He's my beginning and my end. He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes to the Father but by me. But let me, let me, come in, come in. Let me bring it a little bit closer because I need, I, I need to make my way down your pew. You see, Jesus says, walk in your authority, because I am over your bills. He says, walk in your authority because I am over your brokenness. He says, walk in your authority because I am parents over your children. He says, walk in your authority because I am over that illness. He says, walk in your authority because I am over that sin. He said, walk in your authority because, come on, mom, I am over that pain. He says, walk in your authority because I am over that relationship. He says, walk in your authority shallow because I am over that job he says walk in your authority young folk because I am over your grave shallow he says walk in your authority and know that he's a way maker come on he's a miracle worker he's a promise keeper he's light in the midst of your darkness what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, Shallow. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, I was sinking. Come on, I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. But, 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 I walked in my authority. And the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters. He lifted me 
feet now as I walk in my authority. Safe, safe am I. Love lifting me. If you don't know him by now, if you don't know the power of God by now, Shallow, I'm here to tell you, if you don't know him, if you don't know him, you will never, 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 never know him. God bless you. And have a smile upon you. If you don't know him by now, whoo, you never, never know him. Ha. Praise God. We praise God for the word of God delivered by the woman of God this morning. And we too can attest what God has done. We can attest what God has done. Don't, don't get amnesia in the house of God. Don't, don't get amnesia because if it wasn't for God, where would you be? So you know something about this God that she preached about. Amen. Praise Amen. God for the word of God. Will you please stand? It's now time for our invitation to Christian discipleship. The word of God has been preached. Yes, yes. And if we have, if the Holy Spirit has touched anyone in this congregation this morning, we pray that this is your opportunity to come forth. You know, it may not be Shiloh that you want to join, but we're encouraging you to join the body of Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus the Christ, this is your opportunity to come. If by chance you are online uh, and you have a desire to join the body of Christ or join this church, there's a phone number that you can dial. It's 540-779-7474. Again, it's 540-779-7474. Seven, four. If we by chance have someone in the congregation, just raise your hand and one of the deacons or one of the ministers after the service will speak with you regarding the salvation story and the process. Again, this is uh, the invitation. God's arms are continue to be wide open, welcoming whosoever will. Whosoever will, will you come? Will you come? If you don't know me by now, so if you don't know him, hey, this is a nice opportunity. Today is the day of salvation. You never know. This may be your last day. Make it your best day. Make it your best day. Will you come? Will you come? All right. We bless God. We bless God again for the word of God that has gone forth. And we pray it will not return void to him. It will accomplish what he has intended it to do this morning through this woman of God. At this time, we will have our altar call from your seats. Do you want to do that? Sure. If you don't know me, I now. Maybe someone under the sound of my voice. You're going through right now, but we're gonna take this time to lift up what you're going through. And as I pray, you pray. You pray about the things that you're going through. But as Christ is talking this morning, Christ reminds you that I am who I am. And remember that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So let us look to our Lord in prayer. God, we come to you right now. God, we thank you for the word. Right now, God, my brother and or my sister is coming to those doors or online seeking the power, the spirit of the living God to fall fresh down upon them and their circumstances. Maybe someone under the sound of my voice, God, maybe going through an illness. Someone may be going through relationship issues. Someone, God, may be dealing with financial problems. Someone, God, just may need to 
just to feel your divine presence. Our young folk got on their way back to school. Some may have already started a week already. Parents are concerned. The world is concerned about the senseless violence that is going on in our world. But God, because of who you are, the great I am, Alpha and Omega, the bread of life, because of who you are, we may go through. But God, this is a time, God, for us to be able to remove some negativity thoughts, some negative thoughts. It's a time, God, for us to remember who is with us on the journey. It's a time, God, for us to remember that it's because of the blood that we can walk in the authority that has already been given to us. So God, right now I'm asking and praying that you would speak into the existence of your children. Bless us and keep us, God. Help us, Lord, to not leave the word in this, these four walls. But as we go out in these, in the, into this world, facing the dangers, toils, and snares that the enemy has continues to throw our way. Help us to always remember, God, that you are there with us on this journey, that you've placed a great authority in us, God, and that we can overcome anything that the enemy tries to throw our way. But if we keep the positive thoughts, positive thoughts of who lives within us, we're not walking in our, in our own strength, but we're walking in the strength that you have given to us. So God, in our weakness, yes, God, be our strength. Be our provider. Be our helper. Be a friend like no, like no other. Keep us, love us, and guide us. And then God, when we feel like we've lost all hope, use the next person beside us who will be your hands and your feet to speak a word into us, to help us to continue along this Christian journey. Because I am my brother and my sister's keeper. So watch over us and keep us until we meet again. God, we just thank you and we bless you. For it is in the most precious, awesome, and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray and we thank you. That all of God's children say together, amen, amen, amen. amen. And amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, Shallow, I do thank you again for allowing me to come out to preach what thus says the Lord. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his presence of exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all say together, Amen. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. God bless you.